Space Invaders is a 1990 sci-fi comedy film from director Patrick Reed Johnson. The movie opens in, is this Mars or low tide in Ocean City, New Jersey? Space Invaders! Boom! It doesn't get much more 90s than this opening. Well, maybe if you threw in a few bottles of Surge. Over at the Imperial Atomic Space Navy, some spaceships are being pulled by wires. A group of aliens go to meet their superior officer. He informs them they're planning an attack. His Imperial Majesty has sent me to take direct control of our attack on the Arturo system. Arturo system? Uh-oh. Brick Bardo isn't gonna like this. The officer thinks the soldiers are too incompetent, so he's equipped every ship with an Enforcer drone. What does an Enforcer drone do? I'll not send my boys out to Arcturus with an Enforcer drone breathing down my neck! <laughs> I will! Me too, no problem! Meanwhile, in Big Bean, Illinois... A new off-ramp? Why do I feel that'll be significant later? There's a new sheriff in town! Okay, he's the first sheriff in town. Seems the sheriff needs to stop a bank robbery his first day on the job. Why don't you just give me the gun? Cause I'm a crazy, desperate old man! I'm just as liable to blow you out of your socks as to give you the time of day! So, he's Dick Cheney? The old man, Wrench Mueller, gives his gun to the sheriff. He explains he was there to confront the corrupt Clem Becker, who's foreclosing on his farm. Yeah, he's one of those characters that's been modified to be as hateable as possible. He's gonna foreclose on the Wrenchmuller farm, unless he gets the money to pay off his loans. In the Arturus system, the aliens are losing. Is it me, or does this alien kinda sound like Millhouse? Sir, the Arturus have destroyed the remainder of the fleet! I've sent a distress signal to all ships across the galaxy, but we're headed straight into their sun, and our engines are about to explode! And that kid with a backpack said radical. I say radical. That's my thing that I say. I feel like I'm gonna explode here! Ugh. It's Halloween. Sam's talking to his daughter, Kathy. Is she auditioning for Guar or joining the cast of a post-apocalyptic film? The two had to move to Big Bean after Kathy's mom died. A little foreshadowing. I'm just not sure Big Bean is ready for aliens. Over at a model radio station, a DJ replays the infamous Orson Welles' War of the Worlds broadcast. Let's listen in to some of that broadcast, already in progress. We know a remote farm in Lincolnshire where Mrs. Buckley lives. Every July, thieves go there. You really mean that? Thank you, I'd say, in other words, I'd, I'd, I'd stop. I'll have to second late. Don't you think you really want to say July over the snow? Isn't that the fun of it? Back near Mars, a surviving ship picks up the signal. They've lost communication with the fleet, and after hearing the broadcast, they believe the Martians are invading Earth. You know, I remember the first time they played that thing. Pepperidge Farm remembers. And the old guy gets brutal. You put a big bucket on your head and took off with them army boys to fight Martians. Ain't you dead yet? <laughs> Why is the moon so close to the Earth? We're all gonna die! Wrench Miller goes back to his farm with his doggo, Jim. Hopefully he won't lose him like he did a few movies ago. Sam drops Kathy off at a local Halloween party. Is she an alien or a viper fish? Now it's time for the most boring reality show ever. Welcome to another thrilling true life episode of Russell Pillsbury, Deputy Sheriff. Pillsbury clocks the Martians going 3,000 miles per hour. This doesn't look like 3,000 miles per hour. Would the human eye be able to even see something going that fast? The ship crashes into Wrenchmuller's barn. The Martians take off their helmets. They're gonna go to the surface of an alien planet without spacesuits? What are they, the crew from the Covenant? Why is this guy talking like a poo? Nice landing, Blasney! Why is the pilot talking like Jack Nicholson? 3D and driving just don't mix. Why are they dressed in Earth clothes? Oh, it's gonna be that kind of movie. Hey look, they dressed up like the Yep Yep Martians! The pilot tells the drone this is a bad idea, and the drone channels some Darth Vader. Wrench Mueller finds an old newspaper article, and it just so happens to have a picture of the Martians in the exact clothes that they do now. The Martians are not too bright. They send a robot scout to investigate an empty road. The captain thinks it's safe and gets run over. Kathy's sad because she doesn't know anyone. That is, until she meets Brian the Duck. With the captain dead, the remaining crew decide to just attack whoever they can find on Earth. Glenn Becker goes to get gas, and I'm pretty sure he abducted his secretary. Everyone sees the Martians and assumes they're trick-or-treaters. The mother takes them all to get candy. What a bunch of morons! Let's flame these bozos! They're too stupid to live! He must have just discovered Tumblr. The captain uses a mind-control device to take over Vern. 
he kind of looks like he's channeling Judge Doom. The captain orders Vern to build him a mech. Back in the car, Kathy finds the robot and makes friends. Wrenchmuller tries to trap the alien. Pillsbury tries to arrest one of them. The mom's getting suspicious of the Martian, so Kathy makes up a story. The Martian insults her, so she kicks them all out. Here's a model of the farm. Sam sees the video of the speeding ship and knows they've been invaded. The drone finds out the radio signal wasn't a call for invasion, so it goes to kill all the Martians for being stupid. Wrenchmiller goes to the Halloween party to warn everyone about the Martians. Sam gets there to back him up. Just then, the captain announces his plans of conquest to the humans. I hereby invite you to surrender peacefully, so that we may execute you in an orderly fashion. They then destroy that off-ramp from earlier. Oh no, we can't get out of town because they blew up the off-ramp and there's seriously no other way out of town? The humans then go on a redneck rampage. The Martians find the source of the radio broadcast. One of the Martians uses a distress signal, which makes the ship fly right to their location. Only it's not fixed yet. The scout leads Kathy to the ship. The Martians and the captain find their way there too. As well as the entire town. Since they're trapped, they have no choice but to use the DOD. Is that like the MOAB? Oh, it is. So they go to use the DOD, Donut of Destruction, but it malfunctions. Sam's reunited with Kathy. The Martians are now stuck on Earth. Oh no, they're gonna sing. Mars, Mars is my home. Where everyone's short just like me. Vern's in the garage building the mech. I'm sorry, make that Farmzoid. It's Dollar Store Devastator. The Farmzoid chases all the town folk away from the ship. The Martians get back to Wrenchmuller's. They load dynamite onto the ship to launch them into space. Is this where they got the idea for Kerbold's space program? The drone then throws the Martians out of the ship. Wrenchmuller tricks the drone and blows them up. This is some Looney Tunes tier trickery. I'm so proud. I don't know what to say. You can just uh, say your prayers. They blow up the dynamite and launch the ship into space. The Martians vent their septic tank over the farm. The next day, Clem Becker comes to foreclose on the farm. However, the alien poop made the crops grow, so Wrenchmuller can turn the crops over to save the farm. Giant radioactive peas? Are they in season? The movie was filmed in California. Along with Mac and Me, Space Invaders was an attempt to create a film that would capitalize on the obsession with aliens at the time. Kid-friendly aliens. They were hoping to make a new franchise with friendly, but stupid Martians. The actors wearing the Martian costumes had fully prosthetic heads that blocked their eyes, so they had to do their acting blind. They relied on audio cues telling them where to go and what to do. The movie was full of homages. When the Martians launched the scout, What in the name of Uncle Martin is that? Uncle Martin was the Martian in My Favorite Martian. During the end credits, one of the Martians sings the My Favorite Martian theme song. Pillsbury's face is half sunburned as an homage to Close Encounters of the Third Kind. Kathy introduces the Martians as her cousins, Clutch, Spinner, and Paddlefoot, all characters from Clutch Cargo. The radio station was W-E-L-Z, Wells, as an homage to Orson Wells. The name of the movie itself is a play on the classic arcade game, Space Invaders. Ariana Richards played Kathy. While this movie didn't get her much attention, three years later she blew up as Lex in the massive blockbuster Jurassic Park. Royal Dano played Wrenchmuller. He's one of the most seasoned character actors, appearing in almost 200 films. While he's been in everything from the outlaw Josie Wales to the right stuff, I knew him as Farmer Green in Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah, at least he and his dog survived this time. Spaced Invaders is a silly but entertaining family film. The animatronic Martian heads look really good, but sometimes the dubbing on the mouths isn't the best. Kids, 3D and driving just don't mix. The drones are kind of scary, and I could see them freaking kids out back in 1990. It's a fun, somewhat dark premise. Martians are trying to conquer Earth, but are too stupid to know how. The jokes don't always land, but when they do, they are funny. This is from that magical time when family films weren't mind-numbing rubbish aimed squarely at four-year-olds and idiots. Begun to fight. Now would be a great time to start. Ah, ah, ah!